Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. And as promised, we have my first Airgun Depot review. Before we get started with the review, guys, the first thing I like to do is thank the family at Airgun Depot for giving me the opportunity to uh, review a variety of air guns. As stated before by my lovely wife, we're going to be bringing something new to the channel. That is going to be air gun reviews, but it won't be PCPs only. It will be Springers. CO2 pumpers, uh, PCPs, everything, everything. So add a little variety to the channel. So let's give a big uh, applause for Airgun Depot. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Also, before we get started, I want to give a big thanks to my buddy uh, Black Diesel. Black Diesel is well known on the forums. He's been around for a very long time and uh we talked about springers before and he said man if you want a really good springer it's solid uh he told me the quirks about it and he goes but as far as quality the accuracy the smoothness he goes get yourself one of these rws diana 56 th models he goes you'll love it so let's see Okay guys, we're back. Here we go. The way this is going to work is I'm going to review the air gun and I'm going to do it in different segments in different parts of the video. This part I want to go over some of the features of the gun. Um, then I want to show you guys crony string and then I want to give you guys a field accuracy test. Actually go out in the field and shoot groups. I'll try to keep it simple. I'll try to keep it straightforward and to the point because uh, people don't want to hear fluff. They just want to hear about the air gun and what my opinion is. And that's what I want to do. Provide an honest opinion about every air gun that I review. So here we go. Let's start off with the stock. This is a Beechwood stock. It's thumb hole with high cheek piece. Um, it also has very fine checkering on the pistol grip. Very nice uh, checkering as a matter of fact. And one of the things that I like about it right off the bat is that if you're shooting off of uh, sandbags or if you're shooting in the field and you have the gun in your hand, it provides a very solid uh, flat weld for you to lay the, it's not rounded, it's actually flat. So that's one of the, 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 the better features of the stock is that it's great for offhand shooting. Remember, this is not a precision long range uh, bench gun. This gun uh, is made for uh, plinking and small game hunting. So more than likely you're gonna be shooting either off sticks or, or freehand. And like I said, the flat uh, swell right here, palm swell, is great for offhand shooting. Okay, moving uh, forward is we have match barrel. It's 17.3 inches long. Uh, it is has its own LDC. You can unscrew the cap to uh, get to the baffles. Um, so that's nice. Again, this is side cocking. So the barrel is fixed. It's not a brake barrel, it's a side lever. Um, and we'll get to the lever, uh, side lever function in a moment. Moving forward this way it has a safety catch here for the side lever so as we all know with springers when you break the barrel or with the side lever when you pull the lever to the side or an under lever when you pull the lever down what I like about this gun and I'll show some close-ups in, in, in a moment I'll put it right here what I like about this gun is the catch that's here it's like the old blade ramps that's on the Crossman 760 Power Masters where you could move the, the dovetail scope uh, up and you can put it up on the next ramp to elevate your shot or lower your shot. It has that same kind of catch in it. So if you cock the gun and you don't hold the handle, you can actually pretty much rest assured that it has to go through those, uh, I don't know what they, what they technically call it, but they're like little alligator teeth, that the lever, the piston cannot slam on your hand. Um, it would have to go over each one of those levers. So there's a release here to push that down So when you want to close the lever it actually allows you to close it If you try to close the side lever without actually pushing down the release 
it will run into the first round and you won't be able to close it. So that's one feature that I do like about it is if you kind of forget to hold onto the lever, or you're finding it kind of hard to hold the lever and load a pellet at the same time, you kind of feel a little bit better about sticking the pellet in there and that it has to go through this release lever. So that's one safety feature that I love to mention. Again, with all mechanical devices, never solely rely on a mechanical device. Going back towards the rear of the receiver where the tang is, there is an automatic safety. Every time you cock the gun, a little lever pops out and for you to, when you close the uh, side lever, you have to push down and push that lever forward and that takes the safety off. Um, so it automatically sets the safety when you cock the gun so you can't accidentally hit the trigger while the lever is cocked. It stops the trigger and plus you have, so you have the trigger safety that's automatic and you have this latch, which is a safety catch that's automatic. Okay, so moving on to the top of the gun, we have a dovetail, uh, your standard 11 millimeter 3 8 dovetail um, that is serrated. It also has holes to where when you put your rings, the rear mount, the screw, the uh, set screw that goes down in a hole to lock the rear ring to help reduce recall, that is all standard. And uh, it, like I said, if any of you have uh, springers, it's a standard feature on most all springers, so it's no point. Uh, going over that moving towards the rear of the gun we have a fully adjustable butt pad so I forgot to mention that when I talked about the stock there is a fully adjustable butt pad overall I'm really impressed with the quality of the gun out of the box the wood is I mean it's beech wood but it's stout it's one <laughs> it's 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 how can I say it it's definitely uh, not a thin stock it's not fat but it's not thin either very well made, very beautiful wood, finishes is very nice on it. It's not a high luster and it's not dull, it's right in the middle. It's really the way that I like them. I don't like my stocks uh, shiny. Shiny doesn't mean pretty. That's just me though, so I like what they've done here. The overall bluing and finish on the gun is very nice. Let's move on to the next part. There's two things that I don't like about this gun. Number one is the weight. The gun is 10, I think a little over 10 pounds is what the manufacturer uh, list. So it is heavy. It's not too heavy for me because I used to have a Theobin Rapid, which was about the same amount of weight, and I got used to it. <clears throat> As with most guns, whether they're light or heavy, you do get used to the weight. But initially, some people might, you know, not like it because it is starting at 10 pounds before you add a scope. As we all know, a scope is another pound, pound and a half, depending on your scope. So you're looking at about an 11, a little over 11 pound gun with a generic scope on it. Um, the second thing that I do not like is the cocking force. Um, it is really stout. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. That takes a little bit of, of muscle, <laughs> but I guarantee you that... Uh, you either cock this gun or you don't. There won't be any half going uh, halfway pulling on this thing. So again, that safety lever I was talking about, as you see, I can't, I can't close it. So you have to actually cock the gun, push the lever down, as you guys can see right here. Push that lever. Now you can close it. Now you can close it, all right? So, I'll show you another feature that I like. As you cock the gun, watch this, listen for the sound. As you cock the gun, they know that the lever is heavy. That's the first notch. So if you get tired, you can let it go and it will stay here. Watch this, there's another one. So if you have to do it in stages, and guys, don't get me wrong, it's not that difficult. Um, it's just heavier than most. And it, it, a lot of you guys shoot springers, you already know that most springers take about 50 pounds of energy, foot pounds of energy to cock the uh, brake barrel, a brake barrel. So as you go, see, it's different stages. It's different stages. Now the gun is fully cocked. But there are my cons. Okay, for this part of the video, we're going to do crony work. Uh, we have eight different types of pellets to choose from. Everything from JSB 
eight nines to Crossman Premier 14.3 grain to Barracuda Hunter Extremes at 18 grains. I'll put everything up in a picture in picture. Uh, we're going to be using the Pro Chrono DLX, which is Bluetooth. So I'm going to zoom in on my phones. And as I shoot each pellet, you'll be able to see the number come up on the phone. And then you'll see a picture in picture of what pellet I'm shooting. Let's get started, guys. Next up guys, JSB Exact Jumbo, 15.89 grain. 755. 750. Seven. The H&N Barracuda Hunters, they are 18.21 grains. All right, next up, guys, we have the Barracuda Hunter Extremes. These are 18.5 grains, I believe. 703. 689. 693. Okay, guys, next up is a Predator Metal Mag. These are 17 grains even. 700. 700. 744. All right, next up, guys, are the Crossman Premier Domed Ultra Magnums. These are 14.3 grains. Next up, guys, are the 16 grain Predator Polymag. 700. 784. 784. Last but not least are the JSB 18.1 grain exacts. 720. I think this one is going to go faster. It didn't fit inside the barrel tight. It was a little loose. 733. There we go. All right, guys. We're out here for the fill portion of the uh, Diana TH56 or 56 TH. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at grouping. We're going to look at 30 yards and 50 yards. Um, not a long range gun. Pellet speeds are anywhere from what 750 up to just over 800. So we're just going to shoot this gun for what it's designed for. Small game, short range. So we're going to keep it uh, 30 yards and 50 yards. Let's take a look. All right, guys, first up is the exact Jumbo Diablo 15.89 grains. Next up, guys, we have the JSB 18.13 grains. Alright guys, next up we have the Predator Metal Mag at 17 grains.
Hey Alexa, what do I think about that flyer? That flyer is one reason why I don't like the Metal Mag pellets. The tips come off way too easily and that had to have happened either in flight or once loaded into the barrel. That could have been a great group. Thanks Alexa, I agree. Next up guys, we have the Predator Polymag, 16 grains. Next up guys, we have the JSB Hades at 15.89 grains. Next guys, we have the H&N Barracuda Hunter Extremes. Next up guys, we have the Barracuda Hunters at 18.21 grains. Last guys, we have the Crossman Premier Domes at 14.3 grains. All right guys, we're done with the accuracy portion of the review. One thing I forgot to show was the trigger pull. The trigger is a two-stage T06 uh, fully adjustable trigger. So it's two stages fully adjustable. Let's see what it breaks at. I'm gonna show you here. There's the gauge, zero, zero. Let's take a look. one point three five ounces let's do it again holy cow one pound three point four ounces the first one was one pound three point five ounces second is one pound three point four ounces let's try one more time <laughs> one pound three ounces how is that for consistency okay guys now that we're done with accuracy we found out what the trigger pull is let me go ahead and give my thoughts on the gun uh, as a whole so far I've been out with the gun quite a few times you guys have to realize I'm not a Springer guy, so I don't know what type of tuning is available for these guns. But as a base model gun, based on the foot per second and the muzzle energy that I'm getting, according to the foot per second and the pellet weight, this is definitely a 40, 45 yard gun. I'm pretty sure there are some tuning to be done. I'm pretty sure things can be tightened up. So take it easy on me. I know the groups weren't super stellar like what you're used to seeing from a lot of my PCPs. With the three favorite pellets, this gun is very doable. 
the accuracy could improve court by me. It's not, I don't think so much the gun, it's my technique. What I did notice, and one thing I do like about this gun, and this is very important, this is not hole sensitive. I did a firm hole pulling it into my shoulder, gripping the pistol grip, and I did a loose hole. The point of impact did not vary at all. Now, earlier, I mentioned how much the gun weighed and how hard the cocking was. So out of 840, 55 to 60 shots, I am not fatigued. I like it. There's, I, I really do like it, to be honest. I, I'm, because of the recoilless uh, action, it makes it a pleasure to shoot. But other than that, guys, I thank you guys for joining in. The gun was a joy to shoot. I thank Air Gun Depot. I thank my buddy Black Diesel for the recommendation. Um, I can't wait to test more Springers. Also, another thing, guys, as I get more guns, the videos are going to get better and better and better. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked the video, click like. If you're not a subscriber yet and you're new to the channel, please click subscribe. You guys are greatly appreciated and hope to bring you more air gun information.